Hello everyone, I welcome you all to now subsequent session on uh, simple interest compound interest. Now in the previous video, if you recall, we have seen simple interest concepts all right, and few problems. In today's class, in today's video, we shall be looking at the concepts of compound interest primarily and then we look at the comparison between SI and CI also. I will share few formulae which will help uh, in making the problem easier, all right, which will make our job easier basically. Let us get started with this video. But again before I start, for more detailed understanding, all right, I keep on telling it in each of the session, right? please uh, go visit a center near to you right? and check which course you can enroll, all right, when are they starting and if your goal is of doing MBA then we are the national leaders as far as the test prep in MBA uh, exam which is CAT examination is concerned. Right? Let us get started. So, today we shall be taking up compound interest. So, the very first thing that I would like to take up is the mechanism through which interest is calculated here in CI, the process through which it is calculated. In simple interest, if you remember I told you that principal remains constant and hence the interest also per year remains, interest per year re remains constant. Whereas in CI, here the principal changes. In fact, we may say that principal increases each year. And when you say increases, it increases by R percent every year. R is your rate of interest. Right? Each year it will increase by R percent. So, for example, if you have taken a loan for 10 percent, your loan amount will not be the same 6 lakh rupees. Every year it is going to grow by 10 percent of the current value. It is not going to be 10 percent of 6000. That is one more difference that we have between SI and CI. Principal increases by R percent every year. Hence, if the rate of interest is constant, interest per year increases by R percent every year. It is going to increase by R percent every year. So, there are some formulae that we can use here, we can try to discuss here. For example, there is no direct formula for finding out the accumulated interest here in CI, we have a formula only for final amount. So, final amount after n years is equal to P into 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power n, whole to the power n. Now, in the same uh, formula, if I want to find out interest accumulated over n years, there is no direct formula as I said. So, the way to do it is amount minus principal. There is no direct way to calculate this this is how you will do it. So, for example, if you want to find interest accumulated for the first 3 years, you find out the amount at the end of 3 years and subtract the principal from it. You should get your answer. Now, one more thing, sometimes the questions will be asking you comparison between simple interest and compound interest. So, for example, let us say I borrowed some P rupees under SI, I borrowed the same P rupees under CI, the rate of interest here was R percent here also it is R percent and the loan duration was 3 years in both the cases let us say. So, in this case, how will the calculations look like? So, if you look at the first year calculations. So, first year under simple interest what will be the interest amount that will be accumulated? It is going to be R percent of P for the first year. What about CA? First year it is going to be same R percent of P. When you come to second year, SI remaining same will be R percent of P only. For third year also, it is going to be R percent of P only. Whereas, if you come to CI compound interest case for second year, here please understand there would be a change now. Now, what will happen is there will be R percent of P coming from the main principal amount. Now, besides that, there is going to be some more interest which will be calculated on account of the first year interest which is generated here. So, this R percent of P is going to give you further interest as R percent of R percent of P like this. So, when you simplify this, this is going to be, this can be written as, this is nothing but P into R by 100 and this when you simplify will become P into R by 100 the whole square there is a second year interest under CI. Now, similarly, this is nothing but PR by 100 
this is also nothing but pr by 100 this is also pr by 100 this is also same because simple interest is same we said now for the third year notice third year one component will come from the main principal r percent of p now besides this you will get interest from the first year interest so r percent of r percent of p plus you will get some interest from this component also so you will get r percent of this entire thing will come here so when you simplify this will become pr by 100 plus this is p into r by 100 whole square now please note you will get one more p into r by 100 whole square here it will be 2 p into r by 100 whole square plus one more term that you will get after proper simplification is whole cube this is your third year interest so thus effectively i'm just cleaning this if you look at the interest amounts for the three years can we say the difference between the first year interest between simple interest and compound interest is zero going to be zero difference for two years is going to be you can see from the expressions that we have they will cancel out this will cancel out you are left with only this so you can remember it as a formula also difference for two years is nothing but this difference for three years delta three you can see again here the difference is these expressions this one and these two so when you add it it's three into p into r by 100 whole square plus p into r by 100 whole cube which is nothing but if I take p into r by 100 whole square outside common that is delta 2, 3 plus here I will be left with r by 100 correct which can be written as when you take the LCM and all this is 300 plus r by 100. So, delta 3 and delta 2 have the following relation. So, these are the formulae that we can remember. However, please note if the question says what will be difference between the SI and CI for second year? So, you look at only the second row. So, it is still going to be same. However, if he says delta third year, only for the third year, it is going to be those two terms. Okay, That is the difference that we have. So, when he says three years and third year, please have this proper understanding about the question what period is he talking about is he talking about all three years or only the third year accordingly we will have to change our formula so these are some initial discussions that i wanted to have with respect to ci si versus ci and now let us take up some examples look at this it says a certain amount triples in 30 year, 13 years under ci in how many years will the same amount become 27 times itself at the same rate of interest. So, if the amount is tripling, see I told you last class in the previous video that in simple interest the increment is constant, yearly increment. Here, here the doubling rate or tripling rate will be constant, meaning if a certain amount doubles in 10 years, the doubled value will further double in 10 more years. So, for example, 100 becomes 200 in 10 years. So, 200 will become 400 in next 10 years. So, here the doubling, the tripling rate. So, basically the ratio remains constant. The time in which a certain amount P has become P into K, that ratio is K is to 1, that will remain constant. The time will remain constant. So, with this light understanding, if I look at the question, a certain amount triples. So, if I take the certain amount as 100, it became 300 in 13 years. We do not know what the rate of interest is, sorry, say r percent. In how many years will the same amount amount to 27 times itself? So, 100 should become 27 times 2700. So, how many years is it going to take? So, the way to look at it is so we know from above that 100 is going to become tripled in 13 years. This is given to us. So, can I say if I keep this 300 invested in that scheme, in that particular whatever fund we have, next 13 years, 300 is going to become triple, 900. Next 13 years, can I say this 900 is going to become further triple, 
which is 2700. Hence, can I say 100 is going to become 2700 after 13 plus 13 plus 13, which is 39 years. So, this is a regular way to solve it, the lighter way to solve it. There could be another way wherein you can take the formula approach, but again, I would encourage you to go for the general approach rather than the formula approach. Okay. So, using that formula also you can get to the answer, but that would be unnecessary, right? That is not really required. Without the formula itself, we can do it like this. I hope we are clear with this. Next. One more question, have a look at this, pause the video and try it out, right? Because uh, we have discussed this in today's class itself, right? So, see if you can get to the answer. I, however, will be discussing the question here. So, it says a certain amount is lent at SI, also at CI at the same rate of interest. The difference between the SI and CI for 2 years, so that means delta 2 is given, is 900 and delta 2 is nothing but P into whole square, that is 900. The difference between SI and CI for 3 years, so delta 3 is also given and we know the formula delta 3 is nothing but delta 2 into 300 plus R by 100, we can say this. So, delta 3 is given as 2790, this will be equal to delta 2 900 into 300 plus R by 100. This 100 will cancel out 9 times, 9 will cancel out. 310 times. So, hence the value of R directly now 310 minus 300 is going to be 10 percentage. He is asking us rate of interest. So, that is 10 percent. He is also asking us principal. How do we get the principal from here now? So, here can I say P into R is 10. So, 10 by 100. The whole square is nothing but 900. So, when you simplify this, it will become 1 by 10 square which is 1 by 100 is 900, hence the value of P is going to be 900 into 100 which is 90,000. We are going to get this value. So, rate of interest 10 percent, principal amount 90,000, 90, we get our answer. I hope we are clear and please notice, if I did not know this formula, then can we answer it? Perhaps yes, but the path will not be so smooth. Have a look at this approach also without the formula. So, I will just go by my basic understanding. There is SI versus CI. Listen to this. In SI, every year interest is constant. So, let us say the interest on P rupees at R percent rate of interest is I rupees for the first year. So, that means for second year also it is going to be I. For third year also, it is going to be I. We may say this. Now, look at this. Under CI, first year is going to be same, I. No difference. But when you come to second year, it is going to be I, which is coming from the main principle, plus it will be some X. Now, this X is coming from I, the first year interest. The first year interest will give you some more interest, small interest in the second year. Now, third year, you will get I from the main principle, you will get x from this i, you will get x from this i also, right? So, you will get 2 x and from this x, you will get y, small value y. So, this x will also earn you interest in the third year, right? So, that is y I am saying. Now, this is the representation without knowing the formula I am saying, right? Just based on the basis of understanding. Here, difference between two years, SI and CI is 900. So, this is i, can I say this x is directly 900. Now, difference for 3 years, so difference for 3 years is these 2 terms, which is 3x plus y, that is given to be 2790. So, you can calculate x is 900, the y will be 90. Now, please note, y is 90, x is 900. So, this y is calculated at r percent on x. So, 90 is what percentage of 900? 90 is what percentage of 900? That is your rate of interest. So, thus you will get again r is 10 percent. After this, after this, if r is 10 percent, can we say this x is calculated on i? 
So this x should also be 10 percent of i. So that means i should be 9000. Similarly, this i is calculated on this p. So i should be 10 percent of p. So p should be 10 times that which is 90,000. So yet again, my rate of interest and principal amount can be calculated this way by plain understanding. Right? I hope we are clear with that. Right? Now, let us move to the next slide. Right? That is it. So, for today, these were the concepts and questions that I had for you. Right? I hope you have followed them. Right? For more such content, please do subscribe to our channel. Right? Uh, as you know, we keep on uploading the videos on weekly basis. Right? So, already we have uh, a large number of videos from both concept as well as question discussion. You can uh, look at all those videos, all right? And please share your opinions, all right? Please share your views about the approach that we are using, all right? The, whether you followed it or not, if you need more clarity, please write in comments. Me or my team will be responding to them directly. So, on that note, uh, let me end the session here. Thank you and all the very best.